I don't know what kind of parallel universe we've just entered, but last night Queen's Park Rangers thrashed Leeds United 4-0 at Loftus Road. Not only eliminating Leeds' title hopes and potentially throwing their automatic promotion chances into question, but at long last officially confirming QPR's safety in the championship for another season. I know QPR have a bit of a tendency for the odd giant killing, but this was on a different level. And if you told anyone that went to the 4-0 loss at Vicarage Road at the start of the season that we would confirm our safety with a 4-0 home win against Leeds United, well, you just wouldn't have believed it. So let's break down QPR's biggest ever competitive win against Leeds United. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit like and subscribe as well. I can remember way back when the fixtures were released for this season how much QPR fans feared that April schedule, particularly a final four of Hull City, Preston, Leeds and Coventry. Hopes that we would have done enough by the times that Leeds visited continued long throughout the season. It was absolutely the case at the point of Gareth Ainsworth's departure with QPR in 23rd in the league table after 14 matches played with just 8 points to their name. And it was still very much the case even after a tight 1-0 win over Preston last weekend. A result that lifted the mood with a six-point gap to safety restored, only for Sheffield Wednesday to ruin the party on Sunday and cut that gap to four points. It meant that mathematically QPR could still be relegated. And although many scenarios had to go against us in order for that to happen, it was hard to shake the idea that it could still go down to the final day yet. Leeds, who started 2024 three months unbeaten, had only just started to stumble at the business end. They got themselves a win just at the right time on Monday with a 4-3 victory away at Borough, and that was a stark reminder of the attacking damage that they can do. And I've got to be honest, I couldn't see past a loss here. This was, in theory, a Premier League team in waiting, one that spent £33 million in the last summer alone, and provided our goal difference didn't take too much of a hit, I couldn't have bemoaned that result. What an absolute treat then, that from the moment of the first whistle until the last, Marty Sifuentes' unchanged QPR side would drop the most complete performance of his tenure to date. Honestly, barely anyone put a foot wrong. It was such a classy and dominant display. Jimmy Dunn gave us a taste of things to come with a marauding run with the ball into the box in the first minute, but that was diverted out for a goal kick. Willock had the first chance to slice open the midfield on six minutes, but he couldn't quite pick out his pass to Dykes through a congested Leeds defence. Despite being quick to close him down, Leeds left a lot of space all over the pitch throughout the match, and it would be Elias Chair who would punish them for that on eight minutes. It started with Jay Clark Salter calmly diffusing the press on him, placing a cutting ball through the middle of the pitch from defence that Chair gratefully received in acres of open space. He pivoted on the ball and headed for goal, approaching the box, and he knew it, we knew it, he was cutting in on his right around Gurev, this time hitting the ball low rather than high, and with a grateful deflection from Rodon in the box, it nestled into the bottom right corner out of the reach of Melier. What a goal this was, and at long last, Elias Chair was back on the score sheet for the first time since Leicester City away. When I got home from Loftus Road, I had a look at what the Leeds fans had to say about the match in general, and at the point of Chair's goal, I spotted the usual comments of, shouldn't he be in prison? And to that I say, it's Groove and the rest of the Leeds midfield that need locking up, because you don't give Elias Chair that much space to run into, and you certainly don't let him cut in on his right. Now, as you'd expect, the away side moved quickly to go about getting back into the game. On 13 minutes, it looked like the deadlock would be restored quickly. Gurev sliced the ball through the middle, Leeds worked the ball well around the box, and then Pirro was free to shoot from the left, but Begovic got low and parried the ball, initially into danger with Somerville sniffing around the second ball, but Powell cleared it out of danger. But that was to be a fleeting moment of Leeds attack, because from 16 to 22 minutes, it would be the Lucas Anderson show. He initially played a hilariously bad ball from a free kick that just trickled to the first man, but Byram's poor challenge on Elias' chair with the resulting ball gave Anderson a second crack. He whipped in a much improved ball this time and it fell in the box for Elias' chair but he hit it well over the bar. Two minutes later it was Powell attacking this time and I have to say this was his best performance in a long time. He was defensively sturdy and back to his attacking best. He pushed into the Leeds half on 19 minutes and again there was so much space down that left inside for him to put in a cross for Lyndon Dykes at the near post. But his diving header, the type we have seen him score before, went wide to the left. 
but on 22 minutes, it was all about Anderson again because he would double QPR's lead. And the strangest thing is that it all started from his own long throw into the box. He launched the ball in and Leeds were scrapping to get the ball under control. But Willock snuck the ball away from Somerville, lost the ball, regained the ball and then laid it off for Anderson, who parted the Leeds defence like the Red Sea before absolutely walloping the ball into the left-hand side of the net, sending Loftus Road into delirium. It was Anderson's first ever goal for QPR and what a goal it was. I was very frustrated by him last week, but he was excellent yesterday and he was so deserving to get a goal. The amazing thing is that for the next 10 minutes, Leeds barely touched the ball. We were just patiently working the ball around the pitch. There was no nervousness, no looking like we might put ourselves into danger. It was just pass and move. Colback was at the centre of it a lot at this point, shepherding the ball around from defence to the wing. And it gave a period of coolness before Leeds would dial up the pressure. I did notice in this period that Chris Willock was getting very frustrated out on that right wing, who wanted the ball put over to him into open space and presumably a chance to shine in front of the sky cameras. But I think our insistence to play down that left side was a tactical decision from Sofuentes. Not only because we were having a lot of joy in attack and a lot of space down that left hand side, but because Leeds top scorer was over on the other wing. And I think Marty wanted us to deliberately keep the ball away from that side, because if we lost the ball there, there was always a chance that he could spring into attack. And naturally, as the half went on, that did happen a couple of times. The closest Somerville would go in the match was on the 31st minute, when he hit a floated cross on the volley, but Begovic had strong hands again again to keep it at 2-0. For the most part though, Somerville was capably dealt with by our Irish Cafu, reducing him to the bare minimum on the ball. And even when he did manage to find some space in behind, Steve Cook was there to stop any further danger. Leeds would keep going for the remainder of the first half, but they really just lacked a cutting edge in front of goal. And honestly, we handled everything with such calmness. One thing I was particularly impressed by was whenever we did make a crucial block and stop the danger, we didn't just hoof it long in a bid to get rid of the ball. Instead, the likes of Clark Salter, Colback, Field and Cook would just calmly play the ball to a free player and we would just work our way out of danger. I couldn't really believe what I was watching because we've never looked this calm. The match did become particularly scrappy in the midfield in the closing minutes of the first half before the whistle was blown for half time. That was a fantastic first 45 minutes and now we just had the simple task of preserving a 2-0 lead to confirm our safety in the championship against one of the league's most threatening attacking sides. No biggie. I'd say the first 10 minutes after halftime were probably the most nervy. We came out a little bit asleep and that excellent high press that had limited leads in attack and gave us such freedom on the ball when we were attacking was a little bit sluggish now and it gave Leeds a couple of chances at the start of the half with Jorginho heading wide just two minutes in. But we weathered it and we reduced Leeds to the bare minimum and on 58 minutes Marty replaced Anderson with Smith, a really sound decision with a slight drop in tempo. Chair went for his second again on 61 minutes, but his shot was cleared out for a corner by Ampadu. It was the first of many QPR corners and amazingly, we caused a lot of problems from these. So many times the ball was floated into the box, it was spilled by Leeds, and there were chances there for us to capitalise on. But we were just missing the chance to lash onto one of those loose balls. In this case, Colback lashed out of the ball, but it was cleared wide for another corner. Begovic would be forced into action again on 66 minutes, saving Matteo Joseph's shot from close range. But again, it was a fleeting moment of respite for Leeds, who two minutes later were once again forced into a barrage of QPR corners. The loose balls would keep on coming, but we just couldn't get on the end of them. One looked even more perfect for Colback to hit this time, but it caught him wrong-footed and trickled behind him. Paul Smith, who was consistently fouled in his first few minutes on the pitch, grew into the game nicely and was causing problems in behind, forcing Melier to come out and shut him down on 70 minutes. Three minutes later though, it was another QPR corner and another nice Elias chair ball into the box and it was time for 3-0. Lyndon Dykes cut loose at the front post and headed it beneath Melia. The loft erupted and Leeds were dead on the pitch with Lyndon Dykes' second goal in two games. And there's only one possible thing better than a 3-0 home win against Leeds and it's a 4-0 home win against Leeds. And it was Sam the sword field who sealed the deal with his fourth goal in 10 matches, rising high to meet Elias Chez's free kick into the box and heading through the hands of Melier. Hayden and Armstrong were brought on to see the game out and to chance of we want five, the quickest six minutes of added time I've ever seen in a match were played out. The full time whistle was blown and QPR's safety in the championship was confirmed. I can't believe we did that. 
That was an absolutely monstrous performance from everyone involved. It's not often that I've said this, but it was very hard to pick a man of the match. The entire backline didn't make a mistake. It was probably Colback's best performance in a shirt, aside from another needless yellow card. And Sam Field potentially topped his double scoring effort against West Brom. And the attack, who have been so absent in front of goal for so long, finally clicked. I honestly don't know where that performance came from, but I have no complaints. And if that's a template for what this side could look like under Marty Fuentes in the future, then sign me up. And you just can't not sing Marty's praises from the rooftops after that performance. That is an incredible escape that he has pulled off. I mean, we were below Rotherham when he arrived at the club. It's ridiculous. The fans have been the 12th man all season too. It's been absolutely incredible support this season with Loftus Road continually sold out. And we really deserved that win last night after such a roller coaster of a season and such pain and anger over the last two. And what a lovely feeling it is to wake up on a Saturday, safe in the knowledge that we don't have to worry about whatever results happen this afternoon, because we know where we're gonna be playing football next season. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. Do let me know your thoughts on the performance in the comments below. And if you've enjoyed this video and you don't already subscribe to the channel, then please consider doing so. And I'll see you in my next video for my Coventry away preview, my final preview of this season. Thanks again, see you next time.